Welcome to this video about the C2000 Digital Control Library, or DCL for short. This is the first in a series of short presentations about the DCL. The video provides an introduction and high-level overview. Subsequent videos will go into more depth about specific components of the library and how to use them. The DCL is a repository of controller functions which are optimized for use with the C2000. Each controller has been extensively tested to ensure it performs as efficiently as possible. The DCL test strategy subjected each controller to a wide range of operating conditions to ensure its robustness. The DCL was first released in 2015 to unify common controller types found across C2000 applications. Today, the library is used throughout the C2000 motor control and digital power SDKs as well as various C2000 application solutions. The library supports all the current C2000 CPUs, including 32-bit fixed point, 32-bit and 64-bit floating point, and the control law accelerator. In addition to controllers, the library contains single-channel and multi-channel data loggers, a transient capture module, a small set of Simulink models, and extensive documentation. The DCL is delivered in the C2000Ware package, which is available for free download at the URL shown. Note that, like all C2000Ware content, the DCL can only be used with C2000 devices. Assuming that C2000Ware has been installed in its default location on your hard drive, you can locate the DCL in Windows Explorer by expanding the C2000Ware folder, then going to Libraries, and then Control. The Docs subdirectory contains a user's guide, two tuning guides, and a spreadsheet containing a list of functions. The Examples subdirectory contains a number of code examples which illustrate how to set up and use the library. The model subdirectory contains a small set of Simulink blocks. We'll take a look at each of these later. The CMD, Include and Source subdirectories contain respectively the li library linker command files, C header files, and C and assembly source files. The DCL is supplied entirely in the form of C and assembly source code there are no .lib or object files in the library. Users add the selected source files to their own projects and build with their own custom compiler options. This allows users to select only those components needed by their application and to build the project once without having to rebuild and relink a separate library. By way of example, here we see one of the linear PID controllers from the library. Version 3.3 of the DCL contains a total of 11 linear PID controllers of different types. This one, the PIDC4, is a parallel form linear PID which is coded in assembly and runs on the FPU32. Working with the DCL controllers is very simple. In addition to the run function shown in the lower right, the library contains several other functions to help the user configure and use each controller. For example, there are functions to load the P, I and D gains to emulate compensator zero frequencies, functions to reset and to update the controller parameters, and other functions to load parameters from a frequency description, for example in zero pole gain form. All these functions are well documented in the DCL user's guide. In this slide we see one of the DCL compensators in this case a 3-pole 3-0 compensator called DF13. The name comes from the compensator structure, which in this case is a direct form 1 filter of third order, hence DF13. In the context of the DCL, the terms controller and compensator are used interchangeably. However, the term compensator often implies we are working with a frequency response specification and this is generally how the DF13 coefficients would be selected. As with the PID controller, 
the DCL contains several supporting functions which allow the compensator coefficients to be calculated and loaded. We will look at this topic in more depth in the next video. The model subdirectory contains a small set of Simulink blocks. Each block is functionally an accurate representation of one of the DCL controllers. Users who wish to simulate their systems using Simulink can add these blocks to their own models to verify operation of the control loop. Note that at the present time the blocks are not configured for automatic code generation. The same subdirectory also contains a Simulink example based on the PID C1 controller. Version 3.3 of the DCL contains 11 code examples which illustrate how to set up and use the controllers and their supporting functions. The examples are configured to run on the FPU32, FPU64 and CLA CPUs as shown in the table and are an excellent starting point for new users. Examples 1 to 5 demonstrate some of the standard DCL controllers and compensators. Example 6 shows the use of a transient capture module or TCM to capture incoming data both before and after a transient edge. Example 7 shows how two compensators and a data logger can be combined to implement a control structure known as a Smith predictor. Example 8 configures a gain scheduler module or GSM to implement a custom nonlinear control law. Example 9 represents a complex control scenario in which multiple control loops operate at different rates and with different payloads. The code uses the hardware ERAD feature of the F280049 device to determine the available CPU bandwidth. Example 10 demonstrates the use of a 64-bit floating-point PID controller. Finally, Example 11 shows a nonlinear PID controller running on the F280025 device. This device contains special assembly instructions which accelerate nonlinear control. The nonlinear PID is the subject of a separate video in this series. The documentation supplied with the library consists of a 163 page user's guide and two tuning guides, one for linear PIDs and another for the nonlinear PID. The user's guide contains controller descriptions, benchmarks, example documentation and information on how to add the DCL to existing user's code. The doc subdirectory also contains a spreadsheet listing all the DCL functions, in which file they can be found, and their CPU compatibility. This concludes our short overview of the DCL. In the next video we'll look in more detail at the controller functions and how to use them. Thanks for watching.